Afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you very much for rocking up this afternoon. But I've got a bit of rocking to do before I forget begin. Yes, I'm still standing after all this time. And um, my uh, talk this afternoon is very much about still standing after all this time. I can't believe it's actually a year, a year to almost to the day when I left my last um, uh, life drawing group with my best friends, the lifers, some of my best friends, the lifers, and we'd drawn all day on that Monday, got home, and then Boris told me to stay at home. And that's what I've done more or less ever since. And it was like um, shutters coming down. All of a sudden, bang, my large life um, was reduced to this, this space here. I didn't start off um, sitting here at the beginning of the year, um, but this is where I've ended up spending a lot of my time. And I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about the whole experience and the work that's on show in Colonnade is very much um, a sequence of chronology um, of, of the things that I've been up to in order to stay still standing. Um, this is my very small flat here. I'll just do a quick zoom round so you can see that I'm actually in the corner of my main living room here. This is my only uh, part of my living quarters. I'm showing you on my Lazy Susan, which has proved to be an invaluable tool this afternoon for camera work. And um, I'm sure all those of you of a certain age will know what a Lazy Susan is. Thumbs up. If you know what a lady Susan is, brilliant. I think before I, we, I went into lockdown, I was engaged in a, what I would call, a, I was living it large out there. I was involved with creative waves, um, involved in community work, artwork with them. And we were heading up to Truly Hill and doing some work through that winter and then coming back and working on things we have found very much back at, at base. And Richard, can you show uh, number one? I was also working in my studio. I'm a member of BN14 Art Studio, and this is where my norm, this is my normal space. And um, now very much, um, very much tidier than it normally is because I get just use it. Um, for storage at the moment. And I'm reduced back here to my little corner. Back here now, Richard, thank you. Up on Truly Hill with uh, Creative Arts, I got engaged in draw using my life drawings as a basis for integrating them into what I was seeing in the woods up on Truly Hill. So I don't know if we could have a look at number three and number number two and number three richard and these two drawings are in um Colonnade house at the moment as you can see basically here you've got a, a drawing of the back and if we move on to the next one you can see how i've used those life drawings and then to integrate them into looking at um uh, figures in, in a landscape because I was very aware as we were walking around the woods and I, I brought these two drawings into lockdown with me. They were virtually the last things that I did that week before lockdown. I'll talk a little bit in a little while because they've actually been worked on with a special tool. Back to me, Richard, thank you. A uh, special tool that I was introduced to by um, creative ways called a, a pyro pen and I've been using the pyro pen in lockdown quite a lot and that's a, a, a drawing in wood tool but I'm actually going to show you how I've been using it with some of my drawings and working on some of the themes that I found myself caught up in. Truly Hill is kind of still 
lurking in the back of my mind. I'm sure I've been involved in the last few weeks in working with Creative Waves online again. There were a community arts group here in Worthing, a big up for Nadia and Nessa who run that, those groups, um, because they were a great way of um, communicating with through creativity. So two drawings, two experiences that took me into to lockdown. So there I was, banged up, in retreat, and began very quickly to look at and think about what I'd lost. Um, and almost straight away, after getting the shopping sorted out, and how I was going to get, you know, communicate with my family, we all got zoomed up quite quickly, WhatsApp came over the horizon and um, FaceTime and talking to people took up a few weeks, I think, in the beginning. But I decided quite quickly to see, well, what can I find out there online? And I, I um, began to take part in a month long project run by a creative arts group in London called 3030 Works, 30 works in 30 days. So it was one theme a day, you had the day to complete it. And if you hadn't posted it up on their um, Instagram site by the end of the day, then it wouldn't be shown and it wasn't included in the project. So the next few pieces I'm going to show you are very much about that, with some of the things. So number four, Richard, first of all, was the first one that I did, and it's called I've just called it 3031. And the thing for the day was work you are scared to make. And you might look at that and think, well, there's not much scare there. But actually, my big scare has always been watercolour um, because it seemed to be so many rules and different, different uh, kind of almost regulations for how you might use watercolour. So I began to make marks just by working with the watercolour there. So I work, I'm not so scared of watercolour now, and I took, that will come up later, I'm sure, when I talk to work. Moving on to number three, Richard, which was 3030 day seven. Again, these are all in the, um, sorry, I'm, I'm misleading you. Number five, Richard, pardon me. The thing for this, particular, on this particular day, are you a hare or a tortoise? And that made me think about my marks and how I was making them. Do I make my marks when I'm painting, drawing? I do all sorts of artwork. Do I, do I work fast? Do I work slow? And so I began this drawing quite quickly with some very fast marks. Blue, the blue marks are very fast. And then once those were done, in about 10 minutes, I began to add the red. And those I introduced very slowly. And I became aware that I was thinking about very careful placement of those red marks to make them work with the eye. So I learned quite a lot from making that one. Number six, Richard. The theme for this day on day 10 was make a list of things that you can remember wanting to make, but never got that round to. Well, that was amazing because I've actually been following um, a Canadian ink maker, and he'd made some ink with chalk. I was spending quite a lot of time on the beach in this lockdown period in April, and I gathered some chalk and wondered if I could make ink. So on this day, by the end of the day, I'd made my ink, as you can see there, and I used the ink to mix. Um, I tried to photograph this so that you can see um, the uh, the impression of the, um, the ink because the chalk is still suspended in the, in the liquid and uh, I combined it with other medias too, ink and um, acrylic there. So, water April, 
I very much was stuck into this project and my notebook here, back to me, Richard, thank you. My notebook here is full of um, the days, uh, all the um, all the different uh, projects that I took part in that, that month. It kind of got me through. I was trying all sorts of things, making um, displays in my basin in the bathroom, using old photographs and working into them, um, messing about, lots of messing about, lots of play, lots of time to think at the same time as hearing the news of the pandemic coming over the horizon. Created a rhythm to my day because I had to, I had to meet that challenge. I am quite competitive, although I always say I'm not. Um, I think I am because I had to get that stuff posted by midnight. Um, I, at that time, I was more or less working over on my table and on the other side of the room. And I kept glancing over here into this corner and thinking, yeah, I should really make use of this uh, more um, as, a, as a, not just the decorative corner, but as a working space. So I think during April and May and June, I gradually infiltrated here. And as you can see it now, I'll just show you quickly. I've got uh, my, my table set up with my paints on. I tend to have on there anything I'm using just at the moment, because I use a variety of materials. Um, my board is an old door. It's actually just a panel door from B&Q. I think it was something like 1999. I already had it actually in the studio. So I, I got that transported here. And then I've got cupboard space there round to some more materials here that hopefully you can see. So I gradually moved into this space and, and made it more like I would think of as a workspace rather than a living room. I found that working on the 3030 quite um, motivating, but I was aware that I wasn't doing anything in depth. It was literally maybe an hour, maybe two hours, maybe three, maybe a bit longer, but mostly very, very short, quick, fast, snappy work. Quite actually opposite to what I would normally be used to, used to doing. Because I often will work on something, put it away in one of my big envelopes. Still got one here. These are my treasure troves full of bits and pieces and thoughts and ideas and scraps that I may or may not uh, return to over time. That would be my practice in the normal way. But here I was motoring with this 30 a day. And at the same time, I had something lurking uh, very much up on my board here, a painting I'd started quite some time ago. So this is, um, can we start with number eight, Richard? The painting called The Return. And it all began in the garden in Stenning, where I was also involved with um, the ceramics group. And it began because my life as friends, we were able to use Old Timber's garden in Stenning, the home of Tamar and Julian Rose. We were able to do some life drawing there. But it's a very verdant garden, full of greenery. And I was very unsure, this is going back two years, very unsure about how to interpret this until I saw, saw this shadow on a piece of paper. And it was that shadow that made the next painting that I, would, I now I decided to continue with in lockdown. Could we go to number nine? It made it possible somehow that shadow. And this is the painting that I completed on that day in August, uh, 2018, I think it was, and I brought it home. It's in um, acrylic and oil. I worked on it with oil, and it was hanging up actually here in, in this room. And I kept on noticing it after the corner of my eye. So I thought, okay, let's go for the long job because I knew that if I got going on this, it was going to be one of those, those um, jobs. 
Number 10, Richard, please. I began to look at the figure, and this, this was, I should explain, that we'd worked in the garden with a model in situ. So I began to think about how to interpret, first of all, the figure, and looking at the colours and considering how to formulate the feeling of the body. I looked at the hair, number 11, Richard. I should be saying thank you to Richard because he's doing a marvellous job. Number 11, I began to think about the hair and develop that and the tones around the face. And number 12, Richard, the body. The body in the landscape. At first, the original painting I felt that I'd brought home here and I'd been looking at, it didn't belong in the way that I'd interpreted the greenery in the garden. And so I had to look at the colours and the shapes and uh, the movements of the lines to combine the figure in the landscape. Number 13, Richard. So began this big job of looking at what had I got, got down in the original painting, what was essential and what needed to go. And this is one of the big jobs you have when you're working on a paint, I find I have when I'm working on a painting, is I mustn't hold on to my favourites, my favourite marks, my favourite colours. Sometimes the painting needs me to get rid of things as well as to add them. So I began looking at that body and looking at the movements of the plants that um, I was uh, working on. Number 14, the ground, by which I mean the plants and the greenery, were a real conundrum. And I felt very unhappy with the complexity of, uh, 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 of that ground in relation to the figure. Um, I think I was in love with that ground because I found a way of interpreting that greenery, but it, the figure didn't belong there. So I had to start to unpick. And this is why I think painting for me is quite a, a long extended task because I quite often have pauses to give myself time to consider, you know, what are the essentials to this painting. 15, Richard. I began to, on the left hand side there, I hope you can see, I actually began to patch out certain elements. On the left hand side, as I'm looking at the picture, and hopefully you are too, you can see there's a white patch. And I actually masked certain areas with paper for a while and drew into them and began to look at the story of the movements of the um, uh, elements of, of the painting. And also, I think in the foreground there, you can see I started to unpick and to simplify some of that, that um, movement there and paint out. I guess this stage of the painting is rather, sounds like a very kind of intellectual process. And I think uh, I'm using a lot of um, thinking at this time about how is this painting working, what colours, how, how, how the colours complementary, how are they feeding into the movement of the figure? And also thinking of the colour balance in the figure um, as, and, and that's very much what I was engaged in here through June, June and July. I can't remember if I'm on number 15 yet, Richard, or number 16. I think I need to go to 16. And finally, the conundrum was resolved. I uh, just wanted to show you the painting as I, I looked at it on, on the last day that I worked on it. It's very hard to say when the painting is finished for me. I never know. And I could probably go back into that painting today and move things and think about things. But I think I I'd, I'd, I'd finished it complete on that day. I thought it was done. The last few couple of weeks of working on that painting, I very much was considering, uh, what is this about? Why have I paint, spent so much time on this? This was going like four or five, 
six hours a day working away. And, you know, why, why am I, I'm quite often obsessed with this. What on earth am I doing this for? You know, why have I got paint marks on my carpet? Why is there, you know, a light here that, you know, and my water, and why is everything all piled up? And, you know, what, what, what is the, the process of this that means so much? Because it does. And I think it is part of the story that a piece of work can uh, tell about a time, a place, and a moment. And this was really about a time, a place, and a moment. Um, in, well into the pandemic, a very hot summer, uh, very little access for me outside, apart from my uh, uh, daily walk, walking. So I think, in fact, I changed the title of the painting to The Return because it became, for me, and still is, quite meaningful about the natural world and our place in it. And in some ways, you know, where is our place in it now? Where is this all leading us? Because the natural world is surely sorting us out one way or another, I feel. So beyond the return, where did I go? Well, back into lockdown, didn't we, quite quickly. And I found very much in lockdown two and three that I became very um, quite down um, and wrestled with repeat, the repeating, I'll, I'll read what I put here, with the repeating cyclical anxious thoughts that I call frazzles. Um, when you spend a lot of time on your own, which I've now experienced in great you know, hours worth and days worth, um, I found my mind took on these, these kind of circular th think thoughts that really led nowhere. I began to attend Fragile Cafe, which is Ruby Wax's online groups that, you, you, that anybody can sign up to, they're free. And I learned how to manage some of those frazzling thoughts. And one of the way things I learned was that actually not to deny them, not to tell myself they were rubbish, not to say to myself, oh, stop it, but to actually examine what it felt like to have those thoughts. What, what, um, how could I express them? And of course, being an artist, I found the best way for me to express them was through making marks. So I began uh, what I would call, um, I'm just turning a tool on because I'm going to need, need it in about five minutes. My pyro pen, I'm going to need that. So I've just switched it on. Um, I began collecting my, my thoughts in visual, in visual form. Initially in a sketchbook, making marks. Um, I don't think some of these marks are entirely new to me. Um, I think if I look back in some of my old sketchbooks, I'm quite keen on sketchbooks. I've got lovely little ones here from the book hut, just along here at East Beach, where we could get Maudie makes little handmade books for us. Um, I think I was already making quite a lot of um, marks in my, in my sketchbook. Hope you can see that. Um, and I think I was quite often using mark making as a way of um, making an impression of something. So why not make use my marks as and it, you know to to make an impression of my frazzles. Um, I I've done them in fairly normal uh, media, pencils, pen, uh, paint, but I also use different grounds. So here I've got a piece of tissue, and one day I can't remember which one this was. I began to just make these marks on this piece of tissue. And actually, it's quite interesting because I can actually um, use it as a, as a, a moving piece, um, a moving drawing by wrapping it round 
and uh, allowing movement of the air in the room, which sometimes seems endlessly still when you're on your own, uh, to um, express. So I've actually made 50 plus now of these drawings uh, from quite wild, exaggerated um, movement pieces through to more contemplative and um, quieter frazzles. Frazzle is a recognised neurological thought process. As Ruby Wax will tell you, you can watch Ruby Wax on um, YouTube and she's got a very um, developed sense of what it's like to frazzle and why we do it, why it's essential. So that took me into thinking, well, OK, some of these marks, can I actually make them into works that can you know, be slightly larger? So if we look at S, uh, sorry, number 17, Richard, please. Thank you. These all gave, I think these frazzles just gave me a daily drive to create, to use the theme of our, of our talk here. So this is uh, one of the frazzles. I, I'm not going to talk about the frazzle at the time and how come those marks, because actually I don't know. I don't know why, but somehow in the frazzle of the moment, these are the marks that I made. And if we look at number 18, which please, this is an acrylic painting. And again, this is actually a theme that I quite often uh, return to. This circular movement of shape seems to come up, up quite a lot. I guess this was about befriending my frazzles, really. Thank you, Richard. Befriending um, what is an essential part of me and not um, trying to hurry it out of the room because it was actually a part of being in, and still is a, a, a part of um, being in lockdown. I just thought I'd talk about now, so okay, since whatever date it was, I always said stay at home again. Was it the 26th? I think so. No boxing day, stay home, Nora, don't get out. You can't go to your family for Christmas. Uh, you can't hold your new granddaughter on Christmas day or anyone else. He does it just to me, you understand. Um, so what about now? What have I been up to? Well, I've actually through the year taken part, if you um, can see here, this is Noel Fielding. <laughs> in case you didn't recognise him. Um, I've been taking part in Sky Arts Portrait Artists of the Week every Sunday um, in three patches of time. Sky Arts have um, given us the opportunity to work alongside an artist painting a, a um, mostly celebrities, I have to say. And I've done Claire Balding, there she is. I never ever in my wildest dreams thought I'd have done paint and draw clear bolding. And I've done, whoops, I must be careful of my thing. Uh, Doug Rinder, Robert Rinder, who was a fascinating guy. Because while you're painting and drawing uh, for four hours on a Sunday, the, the uh, celebrity, you hear the conversation between the artist who is also the threat of artists who is also um, uh, working. So Sky Arts has been an absolute lifesaver, especially on a Sunday. And uh, I've been also working into, you can see here, I hope, um, some of my life drawings. I was taken back to thinking about through doing the exhibition with Sarah and Francis and Rosemary and Shane, I was taken back to think about those early drawings that I'd done and using the pyro pen, which I have now warmed up. And I went, did a quick flighty visit to the studio and collected some of my life drawings. 
and I'm at the moment working on this one here. And what I do is, as when it's painting on, I'm actually using the pyro pen. Whoops, I better just unwrap myself. You have to be very careful when you're doing things in front of other people because that's when accidents happen. Um, I'm actually drawing into the um, drawing with the pyro pen and it's burning away parts of the drawing. And for me, it adds another dimension. If I put the light on, I hope you'll be able to see. Can you see behind there? Maybe some of the, the light shining through. I don't know if you can. Sarah, I can see you. Can you pick your thumb up? Brilliant. Thank you. I now know. Lovely. Um, yes, so I'm drawing into this. And as always, there is a thread of thought for me. It's, these are my threads of thinking that um, about you know, the nature of us as humans here in a pandemic and what might be eating away with us at us. And for me, quite often it's my fuzzy thoughts. And so I'm actually ensuring that those are represented. I want to represent my fuzzy thoughts because they're actually a part of who I am. I have to say that in Fragile Cafe, you have to watch it a bit actually, just to say, because it's, um, I usually have to have all the windows open when I'm doing this, so I better stop. Um, in Fuzzle Cafe, one of the things that happens in the groups where there is no advice, there is no questioning, um, it's just simply in a, a place where for a very short time you can express what it's like to be you on this day at this time. One of the things that I found is through mindfulness is actually helping to control those thoughts and to manage them. And I think my fragile drawings and working with fragile shapes, as I call them, has also um, helped with that, very much helped with, with this um, whole business of, of being in isolation. Everybody's circumstance is so different, isn't it? And some people's lives have been very frenetic. I know from my family, homeschooling, new babies coming on into the family, um, work pressures, work. So my, but my, my experience is it, it also has to be managed in the same way as everybody else is. And, and it's down to ourselves, isn't it? I'm also taking part in uh, Life Drawing Online with Wendy Barrett from the drawing room. Um, she's doing some Saturday morning sessions. Because I really found I missed life drawing. I've been life drawing since 1999, um, 98, 99, um, every week, 36 weeks of the year usually, um, for all that time. And I really miss, I really miss having the body in the room. But now at the moment I've got the body on Zoom. Um, and that's the best we can do. And again, it's been a real, um, a really supportive thing to take part in. Um, creative Waves, I've mentioned with Nadia and Nessa. I've also been working with them um, and they've been doing um, community groups online in the last few weeks. And that's been great fun. Um, in uh, Colonnade House, you will find, you will see a snark in the window. And this week, Sarah, you will be happy to see I have made snark too. <laughs> and this is this is this is um, three-dimensional frazzling. Because I was when I made the first one, which is in column A, I was so snarky that morning. If I, some people won't know what a snark is, but it's a rather unpleasant behavior, which I will not describe. And uh, I was very snarky that day, so I thought. I know, I'll make a snark. And my dear friend, Jan, I had actually collected all the um, pine needles for me over quite a long time ago. And they've been sitting here in her handmade elastic band from rubber gloves. She cuts up rubber gloves to make them into 
elastic bands and she collected them for me. And now I found a way of expressing uh, another frazzle in, uh, in these. So frazzle two is in the world. Who knows where it will lead? We do not know. Okay, so I think I've come to the end of my kind of explanation. I hope I haven't left anything out, but I'm very happy to chat now and to uh, uh, share thoughts with any of you who would well, like to uh, ask something. Firstly, thank you so much for ex uh, going through your process like that. It's was really wonderful to hear, especially how you lent into your frazzles and you explored them and how you married that with your artistic practice. It's really, yeah, really, really interesting. We've got a couple of questions in the chat, but please uh, to everyone else, if you do want to ask anything, either wave at me or write in the chat um, and I'll, we can do that too. The first one actually is a, a bit about frazzles. Um, Iris asks, uh, are the frazzle colors mood related? Well, as it's, um, I, I, I guess they must be, if I'm expressing um, in my normal, through my normal practice, then colours would, would be mood related. But as I say, I don't uh, try to do it in a, a cognitive way. It's not a cognitive process. It's entirely hand, heart and eye. That's how, how I think about it, really. But I guess there must be, because the colours are so very varied. You know, as I showed you, the pink one, um, and then um, very much sort of um, calmer one. That's the wrong book. I've always got so many blooming sketchbooks on the go, it's quite confusing. Um, this is interesting. This is one, for example, on a, on a, tish on a tissue, uh, um, a nose tissue. Why? I don't know. Maybe I was crying. Probably not. But um, I try not to, um, with this work, well, I think you can see through my work on the return, sometimes it's a very cognitive process. And there are elements of time in doing a piece of work where it's a much more, um, there's a much more decision-making process. Now, I don't think this, these special drawings are. I don't think that's, I don't think that's um, something, well, I almost don't want to do it in a way, because these are, uh, you know, if, if, if art is about life, it has to be about life as it is really. And that's how it is for me at the moment. Yes, they've, they've, they, yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. They've taken on a form of journaling and reflection for you. And I think that's what was so nice to see how that they've influenced your other pieces throughout the year, but have also been a space for you to sort of channel some of your feelings. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I want to talk about frazzles a lot. I think that that's really, really well, interesting. Well, I wondered about having a frazzle chat as well, Richard, sometime with whoever would like to talk, join in. I'm very happy. I mean, I think most of us could do with a frazzle chat, to be fair. I, I think- Go I, yeah. to Frazzle Cafe, because it's brilliant. Online, Frazzle Cafe, you can book in and it's free. That sounds great. Um, so a couple other questions. Um, we have a practical one about the return. Um, was that painted in acrylic or another medium? It's, it, it began in acrylic in the garden, um, but that was drying too quickly. And um, so I started to use oil straight away in the garden. It was a sunny day. So I began to use oil. So once you start to put oils on top of acrylic, you can't go back to acrylic. So it was oils, once I got here, just for anybody else who wants to finish technical, I use Michael Harding. I don't believe that uh, we should, um, I learned very quickly not to use rotten paper, cheap paper. Um, if you get use cheap paper, you won't get what you want. And it's exactly the same with oils. The reason why, um, paints are very varied in price is because of the um, content. This has very high pigment content. You get more color. It goes on, you know, the colors are much, much uh, uh, sharper, clearer, and their quality. So I use Michael Harding for oil paints. Thank you. 
Um, I've got a question from Shane. Uh, he's written, your circular frazzle had a small gap at the top. Is it important as a way out? Well, there you see you're unpicking the frazzle. And um, I just let them be what they are. And I'm, mm. I'm very happy um, to show them and share them and for other people to think those things. I think that's really interesting and I like to hear that from other people. But I, it's not, as I, I think I am, you know, trying to say, it's not a cognitive thought process and um, it's a, there's, there's always the danger of favourite marks and favourite, um, I learned that very early on, and favourite movements of, of, in work. And um, they have their place, but they also have to be denied sometimes. But I, in, in the fuzzles, I guess I'm, I'm not putting up any barriers, so maybe, maybe there is a favourite in there. Yes, that makes sense but because they're so personal though. Yes, it must be quite difficult to, to go back to them and to, to review them or to look at them in that way. I, think, that you um, your work. I quite often go through the sketchbook, but it's almost like, well, that was then, mm. as I was showing you, you know, and this is now. And at the moment, there's quite a lot of snark. Just saying. Well, because you're making snarks, you're you're dealing with your own your yeah, own snarks. I'm dealing as it with were. my own snarkiness. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, and it sounds you know really healthy to have such a, an outlet. But, yeah, but can I just say as well, Richard? Um, it also has to work. This uh, as an artist, I can't help but think, well, you know, it has to actually look okay on some level for me. There has to be some quality to it that I feel is okay before it can go out there in the big wide world. Yes, so I think it's evident. That's just to explain the, the creative process in it really. Well, that's yeah and I was, I was going to say later but i'll say it now if anyone on the zoom hasn't actually or can but hasn't actually walked past the gallery yet to see nora's work in in real life as it were versus on zoom or online it's definitely worth coming and having a look we've got the return just behind me there and we have some frazzles in the window and actually go, you know seeing them in reality it just adds that extra layer so it's very much worthwhile thank you um have we got any other questions no, everyone's, uh, well, we've got people loving on the frazzles and the snarks. <laughs> I bet that's my cousins. <laughs> They're in lockdown too. My cousins, are, uh, two of my cousins are here this afternoon. Brilliant. And um, they're in lockdown and living, well, you know, I think, you know, again, it's about reflecting a life lived. And this is my particular life lived. Well, and that's been the through line of today, hasn't it? Um, when we started with Sarah and Francis and how they found a new form with uh, carving uh, chess pieces out of porcelain, and that was a whole new experience. And then with Rosemary and what's how she's changed to over to printing lampshades with her liner yeah. cutting, and to what Shane's done now with collaborating with her with making with making lamps. Um, so I think each of you, and that seems to have been the unifying force to the whole exhibition, the Strive to Create, is that you are, have all had a level of self-awareness and have all reflected and changed in, in, in numerous ways, but have come together to, to, to show that despite what the years held for you all, you've created some absolutely stunning pieces of work. Um, well, so, yeah. I know that, can I say on behalf of us as well, this began with a conversation with Sarah uh, suggesting the exhibition, I think it was almost last this time last year or soon after, and talking about booking Colonnade and getting in. And this would have been a walk in exhibition in November, wouldn't it, Richard? It would have, you know, this is how it started. But we had to adapt and change and take on the new circumstances. And I'm particularly thankful to Colonnade, to Joe and you, and uh, to Claire because um, you, made, you made it all very much easier than we thought it would be. Um, ending with us, all three of us, 
who would have thought that we'd end up, you know, doing Zooms? Um, uh, unbelievable. And also I'd like to thank Sarah and uh, Francis and Rosemary and Shane because they've been such good store company through this. And um, uh, we will continue, I'm sure. So thank you all. Excellent. Well, unless there's any other questions, everyone's clapping. Unless there's any other questions, I'll wrap it up now. But um, and we just had a question about whether the recordings will be available. So I'll get them down and uh, chop them up and then we'll put them on uh, the Colonnade House YouTube. You can find the Colonnade House YouTube through colonnadehouse.co.uk, where you can also find uh, the listing for Drive to Create and their shop, where you can purchase work, which you should, because it's all amazing. You can also find Colonnade House at uh, on Instagram and Facebook under Colonnade HSE, and we're posting lots about um, Sarah Francis, Nora, Rosemary, and Shane there, so you can click in with all those guys there as well. But other than that, thank you to everyone who's attended these talks, uh, especially multiple ones throughout the day. And I think Nora's going to play us out. So I'll, I'll let her do that. Thank you all. I'm just going to play. Let's all just keep standing. Come on, up you get. You've got to dance. I hope my cousins are standing. Oh my God. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. I think that's it. Thank you. Best ending to a Zoom meeting ever. <laughs>